Having listened to the built-in patches of the XP80, you may well have found one or two that you could use for a particular application. However, these may not be quite what you want, and you may need to change the patch in some way. Changing the patch is called editing the patch, and the XP80 allows you to edit in an incredibly detailed way. However, at this stage, let's just take a look at one or two very basic edits that you might like to make. Well, this is one sound that I have selected. Preset bank B sound 077. It sounds like this. Now, this patch consists of three tones. And once again, I know this because the display shows tone one, two, three, with a dash where the fourth tone would normally be. Have a look at these buttons here. These are the patch selection buttons, which we looked at earlier on. But these have dual function. If I go into edit mode, and I can do that by pressing any of the function keys. I'm going to press F1, which is patch common. These buttons now control the tone on or off status within the patch. And you can see shown underneath the buttons here, tone switch. And buttons one, two, and three are eliminated. Button four is not. I can use these buttons to switch the three tones either on or off within the patch. So you can hear the various components of the patch. I want to remove permanently the breathy component, which is tone number three, leaving the purer sound of this particular synth. So that's now been done. Right, I can make as many edits at this point that I want. So the next thing I'm going to do is add the portmento and solo functions. Again, remember earlier we talked about how temporary these effects were, but when we're editing, we can make them permanent. We can store them within the patch. So they're now switched on. The last thing I'm going to do is change the patch level. Now, at any point when you're editing, pressing the exit button will take you back to the main play page. But you'll notice, at this point, I have an asterisk next to the patch name. This means that the patch has now been changed in some way. Not permanently, not until I store it. But let's go to patch level. So now I can change the relative balance between a set of patches that I have set up. The master level over here controls the output of the whole machine. The patch level controls the relative level of the patches within the machine. So once again, press F1. This takes me to patch common. Now patch common parameters are parameters common to the whole patch, i.e. affecting all four tones simultaneously. And you can see here at the top, we have the patch name. Below that, we have the patch level. So using my cursor controls, down one step, we can access the patch level. And altering the level with the alpha dial allows me to make a permanent change to the level of that patch. Okay. Now I'm going to do one last edit, and that's change the name of the patch. So back up to the top. If I press F1 again, I can open up a keyboard display. And using the cursor controls and the alpha dial, I can rewrite the name of the patch. So. Under F6 here, you see delete. I'm going to get rid of the old name and create my own. Scrolling along with the alpha dial, select the letters you want. Once you've selected the correct letter, press next. V, O, M. And once you're happy with the name, press exit to get back to the main play page. Now, remember, I've made these edits, but the patch has not been changed permanently. If I reselect the patch, it will revert to its previous condition. So the next thing I have to do is write the patch into memory. This is the same procedure that you will use to store sounds in any other part of the keyboard. But because we're in patch mode, it means we're going to be writing to the patch user memory. Remember, presets A, B, and C are preset only. You cannot change those. We're going to use the user memory locations to store this sound. Press utility. And you can see from menu one, five options. Well, option number one is right, so that's what we want. Right is selected. I then press the enter button down here. The display shows me source, temp. Well, this is the temporary memory area. Now, any edits that are made are made within the temporary memory area. That is everything that is currently being played by the keyboard. And I'm actually going to save this sound into user memory location 077. If I want to, I can change that location to reorder my patches. Often it's nice to have your eight favorite patches stored within these memory locations here. 
So let's actually store this in user 001. Source, temporary, destination, user 001. It shows me the name of the destination patch, the patch that I'm going to be writing over, as well as the name of the temp source, which is VOM, the one that I just created. Press execute under F6. It won't work until we switch the memory protect off. So I'm prompted here, it says, warning, you're right protected. So this is simply a protection tool for the whole machine, so I can't actually override any of the previously stored patches. Let's switch that to off. Press enter. It says press execute to write as before, but this time it's stored permanently. And if I change patches, go back, you can see that the patch is now stored permanently. And I can switch the unit off, reboot, and it will still be there. So that's a basic edit protection.